It looks amazing and the most important is that it's not only about the design. Huawei are setting a new standard for smartwatches and the GT2 is the needed upgrade we all wanted to see. Let's inspect! Welcome to the Tech for All YouTube channel. This is where we inspect cool tech in an easy to understand way. One of the first places that have shown you the original watch GT in depth. And for the last 12 months, the GT series have become the most popular smartwatches by Huawei, although the first generation was more like a fitness tracker with GPS and a smartwatch outlook. Launched at the price of around $220 or Euro, it is around 40 bucks more expensive than the predecessor and we're going to see the specs to figure out whether this price bump is well justified. In fact, the price in the United States is surprisingly high and right now it's still $299 on Amazon. Interestingly, Huawei seemed to prioritize the European and Asian market and most likely the Magic 2 by Honor will be the smartwatch to mostly sell in the United States following the controversy surrounding Huawei. At least right now, at the time of making the video, you won't find the Watch GT in Best Buy, Fry's or Walmart, but you can see a bunch of buying options on eBay. And it's also being sold by most of the big Chinese web stores. Of course, I've prepared the best stores to get it from and listed them in the description below the video. There are two variations of the size, with 42mm and 46mm dial, and I've been testing the larger edition, which has the beautiful 1.39 inches AMOLED screen. Straight to the unboxing and the tech specs, everything is again delivered in a very elegant way. Before I go any further, I need to underline that I'm not affiliated by Huawei in any way, and this is honest and unbiased review based on around two weeks of wearing 24 7. Well, with exception the two occasions where I've charged it. It is very obvious that Huawei continue to support their fantastic metal construction and in my opinion it now looks even better and feels better. The size and thickness of the dial is not too big, but not too small either and fits well to almost any kind of wrist size. The band is very gentle to the skin and good for wearing 24-7 even while you're sleeping. The watch weighs only 41 grams with stainless steel frame and ceramic back. Maintains the 50 meter water resistant despite the implementation of a microphone and a speaker. The computing power has also grown using now the Kirin A1 chipset, 2GB RAM, 4GB storage and out of that user accessible are 2.2GB, space that you can utilize for music and at average bitrate it can store around 500 tracks. Can it connect to a Bluetooth headset and play music? Let's try. Settings, earbuds, discovering the new 3-bit noise cancelling headphones and done. If right now you're wondering about the following scenario, the watch, running, GPS tracking, wireless headphones or buds, oh yeah, totally. Of course, battery life will be limited and the battery will be able to last for only a few hours, but any smartwatch will consume a lot of juice facing these conditions. Furthermore, having such a good grade of hardware makes me think that Huawei may further develop additional features and release them as software updates. While the GT1 is more like a basic fitness tracker on steroids, the GT2 is way smarter and deserves better the title smartwatch. Mentioned the battery a few times, 455 mAh, lasts for two weeks in battery-friendly conditions, lasts around five days with always on display, continuous heart rate tracking, sleep tracking and stress tracking and also notifications on. If you play sports, the GPS consumes quite a lot, so does listening to music. And we may talk about two to three days of usage. It really depends on how much you load the watch. Generally, without always on display, the battery life can be drastically extended. As soon as you reach 20%, it asks you to go into power saving mode and disables the always on screen. Bluetooth 5.1, GPS, GLONASS and Galileo support, however no Wi-Fi module and no NFC, at least outside China. That's about the hardware, generally this is impressive and is the first smartwatch in a long time where we can actually see good amount of development and improvements over the previous generation. Let's look at the software. While we have chosen to change the UI navigation style a little. The top button is used as a home button and app launcher. 
The bottom one is programmable and you can access any kind of available apps to it. Default are the sports. Going through the swiping actions, left or right switches between the steps count, music control, weather info, heart rate info, swipe down for quick toggles, similar to those on the original GT, do not disturb mode, showtime, which keeps the screen on for a few minutes, also the find phone option, the alarm configuration and the settings button. The swipe up function shows the notifications. You can read, however you can't respond. Grouping is very good and keeps a queue of a lot of your unread messages. Even if you swipe them away from the notification on the lock screen of your phone, you will still be able to read them on the watch if you haven't done it yet. The settings. We notice an improvement about the fitness and sports data. You now have a voice that can assist you with completing your laps and informing you about your pace. There's also a sleep tracking function. The new menu about stress tracking. Figured out that in daytime, I'm often stressed. A very nice breathing exercising. There's a detailed call log and even a contacts section. Note that the contacts is not used as a feed from the contacts of your phone directly. You have to choose up to 10 contacts, which are something like your favorites, and you can quickly choose to dial each one of them. Oh, and yeah, maybe I forgot to mention that you can actually make phone calls from the watch. Its speaker and microphone allow you to have fully functional calls, which are relayed to your phone via Bluetooth. So if the phone is in the other room, you can still pick up and have the conversation. Or if you're showering and someone calls you, you can still talk. There also is barometer, altimeter, compass, and the usual timers, flashlight and find my phone features. Deeper in the settings, controls about the display and speaker and the button behavior. You can also fine-tune the always-on appearance with possibility to change the accent colors. And we can now compare the smartness of this watch to what Amazfit offered a couple of years ago with the first Pace and Stratos releases. However, now we have unfortunately less sports supported, although with more detailed info, a way battery battery life and premium looking design. And my excitement is mostly based on the huge progress that was made during the last year. Maybe there are a few remaining features that we may wish for, like a basic maps implementation, NFC, and probably easier file transfer, because if you need to upload the music files, this has to be done via the app, and it can take a long time. The smartphone app is called Health, and Huawei uses it for most of their non Wear OS smartwatches and fitness trackers, including the Honor products. Clean, functional, you can configure some watch settings from here as well. You can enable or disable the continuous tracking or switch the watch face. And of course, exceptionally grouped information and statistics about sports, sleeping and steps. Yeah, I also quickly found something to criticize. There is no football or soccer activity mode. And that's something easy to add. Huawei, please! Generally, it would be nice to see more sports added to the list because it feels now somehow incomplete. From the software functions, I think Huawei must fix the Do Not Disturb mode because while you can set it for a nice night's sleep, I've noticed that Always On doesn't automatically stop at 10 pm as I've set it to, and that's a minor bug they could easily address. In my opinion, this smartwatch is so good that would be the device to beat in 2020 offers features that will satisfy most people and has some of the most accurate measuring in its class. Combined with the premium look and feel and the exceptional build quality and the up to two weeks battery life, I can't think of many more things to ask from it. Looks like it will be the watch to wear when I'm not testing any other wearable devices and maybe the watch to compete with if someone wants to make a competitive smart device. It's been a great feeling to present you the Huawei Watch GT2. In case of questions or should you wish to share your opinion, would love to keep in touch in the comments below. To get the best deal about it, check the description of the video. Thanks a lot for supporting me and looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye!